Welcome to Inside NRPS, the cable show that provides an in-depth look at topics related to the North Reading Public Schools. My name is Kathleen Willis, Superintendent of Schools, and I'll be your host. The focus of this show is the Community Impact Team, and this team is a partnership between police, fire, schools, parks and recreation, elder services, and youth services. Joining me today are members of the CIT board, and I'm going to introduce them to you now. Um, to my left is Police Chief Michael Murphy, Fire Chief Bill Warnock. We also have Amy Luckowitz, our Youth Services Director. We have Rita Mullen, who is a board member from the Friends of the North Reading Parks and Recreation. And finally, we have Mary Prenny, who is the Director of Elder Services. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Glad you could be here today. So let's begin. And Chief Murphy, we'll start with you. Sure. Um, can you tell us why the Community Impact Team was created? Well, um, back in 2012, we had a, a shift in our organizational philosophy uh, internally in the police department. And that was instead of traditional policing, which we typically do with random patrols, we shifted to a more predictive policing model. Um, and with that, we needed the community's involvement to help us solve crimes and remove the underlying problems. So I reached out to different department members and um, asked for their participation for a little organizational meeting and developed some partnerships in order to strengthen that. So with that, we, we developed the Community Impact Team. The Community Impact Team met um, back in March of 2012. and we began to talk about some of our goals and some of our priorities that we would be looking at in the upcoming um, year. And one of that was um, we knew we had a drug problem and it was affecting a lot of our community members. So we focused on that as one of our top priorities. So as we began the year, we, we began to look at some other areas in the community that we thought might be um, the quality of life crimes, so to speak. And random crimes, you know, we're, we're, we may not prevent that. We may with some information that we get through the public, but typically random crimes we don't prevent. Um, but we, we thought that the quality of life crimes, the crimes associated um, that people feel that they're, they're, they may be in fear from. And, and that's the house breaks, the, mm -hmm. the, um, the, like I said before, the drug problem, which leads to the shoplift things. And um, so there, there was a lot that the community impact team could do. So we developed our mission. And our mission was to work with community members um, and the community to make the community aware of all the problems that we're facing and to get their input as well so that we could develop strategies to remove those underlying problems. That's great. I just want to take a moment to say also we do have one more person that sits on our CIT board and that is Board of Selectmen member uh, Bob Masseri who was not able to be with us today but he's with us in spirit. <laughs> So let's keep moving forward. Um, there are several action teams <coughs> that support the work of the community impact team, and each board member is a liaison to an action team. Mary Prenny is the liaison to the social service action team. So Mary, could you tell us a little bit about how this team <coughs> works on human services issues within our community? Uh, sure, Kathy. Our Members of our community who work basically in social service field are members of this board. Uh, the town of North Reading does not actually have a human service department, so these members actually work together to enhance the quality of services that we can promote to the community, mm -hmm. and we work as a team. Some of our members are like Rich Walner, he is a council and aging board, plus myself, so we work with elders. We have Sue Magner, who is our veterans agent, who works both with young veterans and old veterans, and especially our younger veterans, all of them returning home from Iraq and Afghanistan with a bunch of problems. Amy, of course, is our youth service director, and she works with all our younger community members. We have Sandy Carricker, who is the director of community, uh, Christian Community Services and Food Pantry. So she works with our poorest, frailest members of the community, and we help um, them with their needs, you know, getting food to the food pantry, maybe filling an oil tank, so we work with her very closely. We have I Irene Collins, who's the director of the Y, and she works on the wellness aspect of our group. Um, Jackie Carson, who's with Sanborn Place, and she brings t expertise on housing and transportation. Uh, Peter Majang is a uh, member of our board. He works at the bank in town, and he brings with us the money aspect. He works on getting us money to fund some of these programs and workshops we may want to run. And actually, there's Dave Doucette, who is our 
IT guru and works with Amy on uh, doing media publications there. And we have Sue Swansburg, who's going to be our newest member of our board. She's our board of health nurse, and she's going to be working on our public safety team. So um, we've accomplished a lot in the year, year and a half that we've been together. We put together, hopefully some people at home have our crisis resource guide. This is a guide that's been published by our community impact team and it deals with resources that may be needed specifically for people in North Reading. So it's the go-to number, the mm -hmm. local number. These can be picked up anywhere mm -hmm. in town, senior center, town hall. Um, we worked with a um, mental health first aid course that we're running. Our mental health first aid course is a, um, an interactive educational program for all adults, which introduces participants to the unique risk factors of warning signs of mental health problems. It's really geared to the lay person. Um, we're running our second workshops. First, we're very successful. We offer one for youth and we're offering one for adults. Mm -hmm. The one for, um, I'm gonna give a little plug right here. So our one for adult course is Wednesday, May 21st, and the one with the youth is Monday, May 12th. So you can still register for those classes. Um, we have worked very closely with um, the school department, especially the middle school, mm -hmm. and Kathy O'Connell. Uh, that CIT team purchased books called Wonder, and it's about a young boy who had a very bad facial deformity mm -hmm. and how we had to deal with um, going to school and working with the other students in school and bullying and not being nice. And we're working very closely with the kids at the middle school because bullying happens at all ages. Mm -hmm. We have people sometimes who aren't very nice in the senior center. So if we can start having people be nice at 8, nice at 88. So um, <laughs> we've done a lot of good things. And we look forward to working with everyone in the future. That's great, Mary. Thank you so much. And now Rita Mullen is the liaison to the Community Youth Organizations Action Team. So Rita, could you talk a little bit about the focus of your team's work in the community this year? Certainly, Kel. Uh, thank you. The Community Impact Team's youth organization is so much like the school. It just models what the K-12 division does do, except we're concentrating on the youth the parents, the coaches that are all involved in the organizations that use the town's facilities as opposed to using the, the schools for the recreation programs, sports leagues, camps, and clinics. The group's made up of over 3,000 youth, parents, coaches that are all volunteers, and the parents are extremely enthusiastic about wanting the children to have a great time. Great in theory, doesn't always happen, so our mission is to look at the cross-sections of individuals that are involved out of these 3,000 people and look towards a common goal and philosophy in the town to make the child's commitment really positive, safe, rewarding, uh, learning the rules and commitment, but at the end of the day, the kids know when they had a good time. Uh, the beauty of being an offshoot of the CIT is that we're able to interact with the police and fire uh, in the schools and youth services and the elderly to focus on the needs of the children and how they interact with the uh, uh, elderly and talk about the hot topics of the day, and, and like the chief said earlier, about the drugs and things. We want to be able to educate our coaches and parents on what they should be looking for also in the leagues. You do a great job in the school, and we want to uh, do a great job after they leave the school also. Uh, with this interaction we've had, we made our park safer by working in the police department, and one of the goals <coughs> that we realized and the police realized uh, that we needed to put more security cameras in the parks. It was starting to get a lot of vandalism. Once we put the cameras up and uh, the security uh, in the park, it dropped the vandalism to almost nothing, which was great, mm -hmm. and made the kids realize that, you know, you, you have uh, somebody watching you in the park, and it made it safer for the elderly to feel uh, good about going there. Working with the school's athletic subcommittee, we were able to follow your lead on the concussions, and we were able to bring everything that we learned from that back to the youth leagues, back to the uh, parents and coaches, so that they knew what the policy and protocol was if a child get hurt, how to take care of themselves and what they should do. We're also involved in the National Alliance for Youth Sports in educating our volunteer coaches and uh, league administration. And this is an education program uh, provided all across the United States uh, where we can educate volunteer coaches, league administrators on adopting a community philosophy that's consistent across all the leagues and across town. This makes the youth sports uh, more safe and positive for the children. That way the parents know again what to expect when they uh, join a sport in town. Um, but we do realize this is just the tip of the iceberg and we recognize that in today's society that we must be much more proactive and vigilant on how to keep our children in a safe environment and at our parks. When they go off and leave the house or leave the school, the parents should feel as safe when they're at a park as they do at school. 
We want to be consistent as the schools are in educating our children, educating our parents, and ed educating our volunteer coaches about what they can and should expect when volunteers run organizations. We want the parents to know what to expect and we want to keep our fields and facilities safe for them. Finally, if any parents out there or anybody on the, the team here is interested in volunteering uh, to be on this uh, youth committee, we'd, al you, we'd also like you to volunteer if you have any expertise, bullying, how to prevent it, um, coaching, anything else. We'd love to have you join us because mm -hmm. we really are looking to make this very positive and uh, go over everything with the coaches and parents in town. It's very rewarding. The time is not that much. We can keep the meetings to an hour. So you can feel free to please call me at 978-664-5694 or recreation at 978-664-6016. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you, Rita. And I'm pleased to report that I am the liaison to the K-12 Programs and Services Action Team. The members of this action team include parents, teachers, administrators, and Amy Lekowicz, Director of uh, Youth Services. And you'll find that Amy is on just about every action mm -hmm. team that we have. Um, and the focus uh, for this action team, since it began, was um, to provide parents with the tools that they need in order to meet the needs of their children. Um, we could focus on any area when it came to programs and services for our students, but we decided to start working with our parents first because, as we all know, they are their children's first teachers. So what we did was we identified topics of interest that we thought would be important for parents, and then we narrowed down the first topic for our presentation, which was cyberbullying, and that was presented last spring. And it was called Social Media Savvy, Summer and Beyond. Um, as an outcropping of that, we found that parents were looking for a bit more support in helping them understand what are those most popular social media websites that their children were visiting. Uh, some parents um, weren't sure how to access those sites or how to navigate those sites when they were able to access them. So I'm pleased to say that Claudia Brown, who sits on the K-12 Programs and Services Action Team and is the health teacher at the high school, pulled together her sophomore health uh, class. And what they have done is designed a website that provides this information for parents. They've been working on it all year. Members of the CIT um, have taken a look at what it is that the students are doing. The K-12 Programs and Services Action Team has met with the students to review all of the various um, clips that they've included on this media website for parents and we'll be launching right after April vacation. So stay tuned, we'll provide more information around this. This year's presentation focused on developing healthy relationships with a focus on teen, tween, dating abuse. Um, we had our district attorney, Marion T. Ryan, and Sean McMaster, who works for community outreach under the, in the DA's office, come and do a presentation for our parents. And I'm pleased to say we had over 100 parents and community members in attendance um, for this very important workshop. So we'll be looking to work again in the future with the district attorney's office on other topics of interest for our parents. Um, another activity that we're engaged in is collecting some data from our middle school and high school students around healthy behaviors. And um, through this collection of information on a survey, we may be identifying areas for future focus that we really think need to be addressed within our community. So stay tuned. We'll keep you appraised of that information as we go forward. Last August, we had a wonderful new annual event that was introduced in North Reading called National Night Out. And I'm going to ask Chief Warnock and Amy Lekowitz to talk a little bit about what took place last August, the purpose for this event, and maybe the date for the next NNO. Sure. Um, it's actually a national event. So this was North Reading's first time participating in this event. So we really weren't too clear on what our, uh, what kind of response we would have from the community. And I'm so happy to say we had almost 600 people attend this event last year. It was held on a Tuesday night in August, as it will be again this year. It's going to be Tuesday night, August 5th, um, in the evening, free to all. And what happened last year was uh, the focus is really on safety across all age demographics. And that's really key to point out. You're hearing a lot about youth programs. But uh, National Night Out really focused on everything from 
um, taking care of seniors with identity mm -hmm. theft and making sure that they're not becoming victims of that, to how to sign your young children up for proper swim lessons and everything in between. And that was really key. We had partners come in and presenters, so throughout the night, uh, we would stop the program, stop the fun, and people could go and listen uh, to a presentation from like the Burbank YMCA, for example, talk about pool safety. Mm -hmm. And if you have a pool in your backyard, what are some things you need to consider? We had performances as well, so the local dance companies and karate studios came and did um, free performances. Great food. We had a lot of um, the police officers volunteer to cook barbecue. Everybody came. It was free. So all the food was free as well. We had um, an ice cream truck come. The kids loved it. Bounce house, face painting, all run by volunteers, which was wonderful. Um, tons of resources. And uh, I think Chief is going to talk about one of the, the biggest hits of that night. Um, the fire department loved participating in this event. And uh, through the years, we've noticed that little kids love being firemen. So we built this house. It's a mock house. Mm -hmm. And it has fire in the windows. And we set it up and we used one of our engines to uh, get a small hose. And the kids come and they put the fire out. And they each get a fire hat. We have pink for girls and red for boys. Um, it's one of the big draws mm -hmm. at Open House. And I'm sure and know for a fact it was a big draw at National Night Out. And we're going to continue to uh, cherish all that because our main goal is safety mm -hmm. and if we can teach children how to be safe from fires you know it, it, it's very important not only that we had literature on smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors which is uh, and even in today's times it's 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 unnerving to see that people still die in their mm -hmm. homes of fires and you find out that they didn't have a smoke detector or worse they had a fire in their fireplace and something went wrong and they didn't have a carbon monoxide detector that falls back on us we really need to educate the citizens on how simple it is to have these devices and how easy it is to get these devices to make sure that they're safe. So the bottom line is the fire department's on board. We loved it. It was a great time and uh, I can't wait to uh, August when we see how it goes. We got a lot of feedback uh, about that night and I have to say the, the parents of the little firefighters <laughs> were, were the most vocal in saying how much they loved it. We had um, the state SWAT team and canine units came as well. That was a big hit. They did demonstrations talking about safety across um, all departments. And uh, we actually definitely need, we're hoping this will be bigger than 600 this year, so we'll be needing some more volunteers. So if anybody's interested in volunteering, uh, they can email us at northreadingcit at gmail.com. That's great. And you want to say that again, Amy? Where can they email us? Northreadingcit at gmail.com. All volunteers are all welcome. Volunteers. Thank you, Chief, and thank you, Amy. Sure. So in, in wrapping up, um, can we talk a little bit about what some of the future focus areas for the CIT will be? Sure, do you want me to talk about sure. that? Oh, sure, I'm happy to say that um, our board has approved us to move forward on developing a brand new action team. And it's a, more of a coalition model, um, a federal coalition model, actually. It's um, all going to be focused on youth substance use prevention. So it sounds very broad and it sounds very focused, but the truth of it is we'll be tackling uh, prevention at a very early age across um, multiple sectors. So for example, um, our coalition is going to have at least 12 members, at least 12 members, I'm mm -hmm. hoping for 14 to 15, across sectors including parent representatives, youth representatives, which is very key, um, education, faith-based organizations, volunteer organizations. There's um, a model of 12 sectors, but we're hoping to also tap into active duty or reserve military mm -hmm. because of their leadership skills and their impact in the community. We'll, um, I know Rita mentioned the, co the commitment of being on an action team, and this is going to be similar to an hour a month to an hour and a half, and then any offline work that the committee decides to do. It's very exciting. We're, we're going to be offering um, programming that is going to be driven by the survey that you actually mentioned, Kathy. Mm -hmm. to, we have our gut feeling about what needs to be done, but if we don't have the science-based uh, surveys or data to back us up, then we're really just going by our gut. So we're going to be looking a lot about what the youth have to say about what is the need in the community in response to substances like alcohol, tobacco, marijuana, and maybe some additional substances. Um, our programs, because they are going to be funded by the community impact team right now, we're hoping to get some grants in the future, we're going to be able to also address um, issues like senior prescription drug use. Mm -hmm. So this is not just going to be youth focused, although that name is attached to the coalition right now. 
we are going to be a little creative in how we deal with substance use across mm -hmm. the board and we're working very closely we keep in keep in touch with Mary quite a bit about what trends she hears about um, you know working with the seniors that's true and when you think of seniors you're not always thinking of your 85 90 year old people I consider a senior citizen as a statistic is 60 years old so from offending anyone I'm sorry but those are the numbers in the um, the people who are becoming of age at six year coming with new unique problems as the chief already knows they're coming with drug problems they're coming with prescription drug problems they're you know um, sometimes they call them the woodstockers have come of age and they're coming with money problems so these are issues that we have to be addressed has to be addressed obviously and hopefully with the grant that hopefully we will receive it will do wonderful things for the entire town, the entire community, because we are an entire community team. It's just not youth. They're older people. They're middle-aged people. We all live here together, and we all have problems that we want to have resolved and have a wonderful quality of life in North Reading. Kathy, I just wanted to say, too, is we facilitate as a community impact team, and, you know, the theme you've been hearing is about volunteers, and our success is based upon the volunteers, mm -hmm. and we couldn't have done many of the projects that we've done or had the impact on the community as, as we have had without the volunteers. So I, I'd like to really thank the volunteers that have helped support these teams. And also um, thank Representative Brad Jones and, and Senator Bruce Tarr um, for their support. We were able to, to um, obtain a grant from the state. This is the sec uh, third year um, we've obtained this grant and that grant has helped us support the programs that, that the community sees through the community impact team. That's great. Well, I'd like to thank all of you for joining me today, and I'm proud to work with all of you on this important mission of the CIT. So, uh, as I usually do at the end of every program, I'd like to leave you with a quote. And in closing, I leave you with tonight's quote by Helen Keller, who was an American author. She was a political activist and a lecturer. And it's a very simple quote, very powerful. Alone, we can do so little, but together, we can do so much. Thank you and good night.